this whole bit right here, right? I might not need this stuff because now I've got the numbers that just basically represent it. So sometimes it might be nice just to unclutter things to actually delete this and then click on these little lines so you get the lines and delete them so that you just get the numbers that are representing them. And that could be a, another format that you can use just as we build our charts. But you get this kind of boring, uniform type of distribution. And if we were to write an equation for the uniform uh, formula, it would be something just like f of x equals c. For, so for every x we have, we're going to get you know c. So it's a uniform distribution. And note that this is a family of distributions because it's possible that if we roll the dice uh, less numbers, like if we if we roll the die only uh, 300 times, then we have a different distribution. It's still a uniform distribution here that is at the 50, right? So then I'm going to say 1,000 and bring it back there. Now, of course, in real life, uh, we wouldn't get a uniform distribution because we're, we're using a sample, in essence, instead of the entire population of infinite rules, right? We're just doing a thousand rules. So we can simulate, okay, what would actually happen and compare a simulation of rolling the dice. So let's let's say we, we do a simulation of rolling the dice, uh, rolls, and now we'll actually test this out and see how, and then we can compare to what the expectation is. That's basically what we often do, right? We're gonna say this is the perfect model of the world, our expectations, and then we'll basically see what actually happens in the test and how close is it to the actual expectation. So we're gonna to go to the home tab, font group, make this black and white, and then we'll center it, and then we're gonna roll our die. Things are gonna get dicey here. Things are getting dicey. So we'll do this by using our random function again, equals rand brackets, or rand between, I should say, between tab. There's our formula, and I'm gonna say we wanna start at one, comma and go up to six so it's going to give me a random generation of one to six representing a dice rule so that's just perfect and then i can copy that down i'm going to go down to 1001 looking at the the numbers on the right hand side because one is already taken up to get a thousand rolls so i'm just going to bring this down to 1001 and note i can do that quite easily uh, in excel even though it's quite a ways quite a lot of rules would be a lot more difficult to do this in the old days when you actually had to sit at the table and like roll the dice <laughs> a thousand times right it'd be a tough that would be a pretty pretty cushy job for uh for somebody to be the the dice roller for the experiment but uh now we just have we can just kind of simulate it and so then if we do that then uh, this is this is what it's spitting out for the random outcomes. So notice it changes again all the time. So I don't want it to change. I want that to be my generator. And now with the generator, I'm going to copy this whole column, right click and copy and then paste it, but hard code it so that I'm going to say right click and paste just the numbers. So now it's not regenerating every time and my generator is still over there if I want to do it again. So let's go ahead and make this one home tab font group black white let's center this thing and so there are our results so so now let's copy the same table from my expected results and then add the actual results in a call another column so to do that i'm going to put my cursor in column q equals scrolling to the left and just picking up the dice rolls and then I'll just copy that down. I'll copy everything that's in that table down. Six and then the total. And then I'll copy it to the right as well. And there's the same information that we pulled in from the table. Let's make it, let's format it. I'm going to go to the home tab, font group, black, white, uh, wrap it, center it. By the way, you could do it this way too. Let's do it this way. It'll be easier. I could select this entire thing and say, I just want the formatting. So I can go home tab, format painter, just give me the formatting and then just put that right here, boom, and it pastes the format of it beautifully. Okay, so then let's take our actual rules, actual rules and compare it. 
And so I'm going to format paint this one again, home tab, format painter, boom, to get that. And then in order to get the actual rules, what I'd like to do is say, Excel, take everything in this series of numbers and count them if every time you see a one. So we can use our trusty count if function to do that. So this equals count if brackets. I'm going to go over here, put my cursor in uh, O2, hold down control shift and down on the keyboard, taking it all the way down to the bottom. And then we can have control backspace taking me back up to the top. And so I can see the formula. So there it is, closing it up. And uh, we've too few arguments. Count if I need to finish the argument. So comma, what's the criteria? Second condition, number one. So count if in that range, you see a number one. Enter. Uh, and then I can copy this down. Now notice this time I didn't put a table over here. Uh, and sometimes the tables are useful and sometimes they're not. So I'm going to try to go back and forth between using the table or not. If I had a table that I was referring to, I wouldn't need to make the cells absolute references. But here, since I don't, I could make them absolute by selecting F4 here and F4 so the range of the table doesn't move. Now note, you can also use spills and arrays. So there's actually multiple ways to do the same things these days, which is really cool, but also confusing. So I'm going to try to mix in some of that stuff as we go. Uh, so in any case, I'll do that. I'm going to copy this down, put my cursor on the fill handle, drag it down. So then I should have the same range here, right? It's picking up the same numbers this way, and it's counting if there's a six in there. So that looks good. Now I can kind of double check by summing it up and I should still get up to 1000. So that's our double check that my range didn't get uh, skewed or anything like that. I could take the difference then, difference between what we expected and what actually happened. This equals what we expected minus what actually happened. I can copy that down, double clicking on the fill handle and then down here, alt equals. That's our keystroke for the sum function. Enter. There, there we go with our differences. I can go home tab, font group, uh, and format this in the same formatting. And then let's make all of this bordered and uh, blue. And let's put some underlines under here and underline. So there we have it. We can make this a little bit thinner, maybe. We can make that a little thinner. I don't really need a space in between these two or this one. We can close that up if we want to. And so then uh, we could make a, a histogram based on what, act, what the actual results are. So there's a couple ways we can do that, right? We could take a histogram of the entire column of results or since we've summarized the results in essence into buckets over here, we can use our bar chart. So let's use the bar chart. I'm gonna select this column, holding down control and select this column because I wanna look at the actual results. And then I'm gonna go into the insert tab and we're gonna go into the charts and add a bar chart. So there's the bar chart. I'll drag it to the right. Let's make it a little bit smaller bring it on over to the right and so there we have it so then i'm going to go into my chart here 